it may have been a little bit stressed. I don't know. Because it seems like once the seed opens and it's coming out of this perlite, it's actually more vigor. What's up, gardeners and homesteaders? I hope everybody is happy and well. We are going to talk about perlite today and why I use it on my seeds. I did a video not too long ago and the thumbnail and I've done a couple posts about it and it's something I've been trying out but I got a lot of questions about it. So I want to address in this video how I use the Paralyte on my seeds and why I use it. But first, I want to check on a couple winds that are going on in the garden. Some things that are just doing really well and I test it to this warm weather. I mean, it's 78 degrees a day. And by the way, if you like social distortion, give us a thumbs up. Oh, these are my snow peas and I've done fall snow peas before and never had anything like this. They're notoriously slow, but they're coming up, man. And I mean, I think it's a blessing. At the same time, it's way too early in the season till it's not even winter yet. We're like maybe 10 days away from winter, something like that. So they could make it, they couldn't. Hopefully we'll start getting some production soon. I don't see any flowers on it, but I've tried them in the fall in the past and it's just never really worked out. This year has been a banger. So hopefully they can get on up this trellis and we can see what's going on. And I actually have them match pretty well on both sides of the trellis. So that's actually a big win as well. This one behind me, something I've been trying for years and I haven't cracked it yet, but we're making progress. And again, I attest all of this to this above average weather that we're having. I mean, usually it's not very cold right now, but we've generally would have more freezes or frosts, but my Brussels sprouts and not all of them are doing well, but this one bed is looking promising. Well, I know that you experience Northern gardeners with Brussels sprouts probably like, yeah, right. That ain't nothing. But for me, this is big. I mean, we've already got some sprout production going on, so that's good. And the biggest thing is I got the stems thicker. So we'll see how it goes. This is a big test. It's an ongoing trial. I'll, I'll never stop growing Brussels sprouts, I don't think. It's just we eat so many of them. It's worth it. But we're going to try and plant them earlier in the year next year. And you're going to see that in the upcoming videos. Now, like I said, that's not the story for all of the Brussels sprouts in my garden, but this particular little patch right here is seems to be doing pretty well. So we're pretty happy about that. Now I do hope that they get done soon enough so that I can move them out of my garden and get something else in its place. But I'm in it. I'm in it to win it, man. I'm going, I'm going for Brussels sprouts. Last year was the first year I didn't get skunked and my Brussels sprouts were about that big. So hopefully we can get Brussels sprouts that are that big. <laughs> the last one, which I know is not much to look at right now, but is actually a pretty big win for us is this row of kohlrabi we started. So this whole row we transplanted a couple weeks ago and they were really long and leggy and they're actually starting to stand up now and thicken up. And you can see that they're actually getting fairly strong. And this is a big win because we did these so late in the year. Usually we're done planting in the garden say early November roughly, but we're going to put our faith in the weathermen and the weather people, and we're going to see exactly if they're true to what they say, where it's going to be an above average winter for us. So if that's the case, then we should be getting some kohlrabi here in about a month, maybe. I mean, once these roots get settled, it's off to the races and it's been really dry, which you're going to see right now, because we're going to start some seeds and I, my rain perils are just bone dry. It's pretty crazy. You can actually see, hopefully you can see on this, if you can see right here, the sweat mark. So that's how much we have. And by the end of today, we'll probably be down to here. So that's not much as far as water goes. So this is what's going on. Last video, I gave you my whole planting schedule. And as I look out into the future, you know, the crystal ball, I see that it's going to be warmer than normal for right now. So we're deciding, hey, let's go ahead and get some of these started a little bit early. And we're still going to do our staggering that we talked about. But this is going to help alleviate a lot of pressure off of me as far as like the amount to get started. Plus, I'm only running with three heat mats right now. So it's best for me to seed three 10, 20 trays at a time so that each one can get the desired amount of time on a heat mat. So today we're going to be doing two different types of rutabaga. I'm going to be doing the standard American purple top. And then I don't know how to say this. 
I've never tried to say it out loud. Let me put it that way. I'm gonna say, I'm going to sew Nad Morska Rutabaga. So this is from Southern Seed Exchange. I really like this company. Um, we're gonna do some spinach. Uh, so in the last video, I showed you that hey, my spinach. I'm not a good grower. Well, guess what happened overnight? The spinach started to grow. So we're gonna go ahead and try and do some long-standing Bloomsdale spinach and some Sun Angel spinach. So this is supposed to be really good hot uh, heat tolerance. So we're probably gonna sow more of these than the others, but we'll kind of see how it goes. I did find a pack of bunching onions, and since the seeds don't last but a year, I figured I'd go ahead and get them in, and these should continuously grow. So I should only have to do one planting, and then they'll continue to grow throughout the years, and I can just keep trimming them all the time. Uh, but actually, today's a big day. We're moving on from our Copenhagen market cabbage that we had grown for so long, which is typically a smaller head. And we're going to do golden acre cabbage today. And then I have some dazzling blue kale that I'm going to start and some hybrid mamba kale. Uh, this is supposed to be a bigger variety. So we're going to give that a shot. And that is it for this. So we're going to skip over broccoli today. We're going to skip over cauliflower. And I can't remember, let me get my list. Previously sowed a lot of turnips. So we started a bunch of seeds. So I don't know if I'm going to start more or not. I have to wait and see. But as far as for us selling seedlings, turnips aren't really a good seller as far as the seedlings go. So in these six packs for selling, and not also for myself, but it's easier to market these and push these along to the customers so to get six turnips in here is not really a good deal versus like a six pack of cabbage or something like you get six giant heads of cabbage so that works out well so like i said i'm doing three 10 20 trays so each tray takes six six packs so we've got that and in the past i have made my own seed starting mix and it worked well but in order for me to do it in this method you know last year when i was selling seedlings it took a long time to make it so now I'm just using the Pro Mix Micro Rizai general purpose mix and it's working really well for me. And this is a little bit more fluffier. So, I mean, you can see it's a little bit more fluffier. It's already got Paralyte in it. So that works well, which does not pertain to what we're doing today. Just because it has Paralyte in it doesn't mean I'm not going to top dress with the Paralyte. So I'm going to get started with that and I'm just going to set the camera down and show you my process. And I'm going to do one 10 20 tray and show you how that's done. Just peat moss or anything, you know that you gotta get it real wet. So we're gonna pre-wet this. And it's already been pre-wetted, but I like to use about a can or two on here to just make sure it's nice and wet all the way down. Just do this six pack right here, this tray. And what we do is we come around, and so usually what I would do is I come in and I actually use this wire sometimes and i would dig around a little spot drop the seed in cover it up but this new method i was talking to an old farmer and he told me you know that he has done this method before and he i mean he's done it for years and he loved it it just worked out really good for him so i decided to give it a try and i gotta say i've done a, a number of seeds with it this year and i'm i'm in love already it's easy and it's cheap and my dogs just found the raccoon that were hunting my chickens last night so if you hear barking that's what it is but it works out really well. So there's no digging in the soil at all. I know it seems crazy, but just, just check it out. So all I'm gonna do is come through and I'm just gonna make these dimples in here with my fingers. You don't, it doesn't matter how deep it is. I mean, you don't wanna jam it all the way down, but you're doing two things. You're making a compact section to put your seeds in. You're putting a little pocket to drop your seeds in. And so that's gonna work out really well. And then I just kind of come through, just make sure it's tight. And you can feel the difference as you go through of what's tight and you know what's compacted and what's not. And this will ensure good seed to soil contact as well. And so this is where things start to get a lot different from what I used to do. So I'm just gonna come through and because I've had, I typically do three seeds per cell but since I've had such good germination, I'm gonna test out today just doing one seed per cell. And I usually don't do that, but this will help <clears throat> stretch my seeds even farther. 
And I mean, typically if you're doing your own, you know, starting seeds for your own garden, it's not a big deal if you use a couple extra seeds, but I want to stretch these. I didn't get a whole lot of these like I thought I would. Uh, again, I should have read the weights on them, but we're just going to drop one seed in. And if I get two in, I get two in. All six of those six packs are now seeded. Now it's time for the perlite. So I want to be very clear at this moment. I got a lot of questions on social media and some on YouTube and even a couple emails saying like, hey, are you planting only in perlite? And that is not the case. I'm 100% not planting in only perlite. It looks like that from the top, but you see I've already got a good seed bank or a good soil bank down below so that it can grow into the soil. Now the perlite does have a couple good reasons for using it. So if you don't know what perlite is, it's basically in layman's terms, a dried volcanic rock. So I had a lot of problems starting seeds in the past where I would water them and then they would sink deeper into the soil and then they just wouldn't come up and get good germination. So then that, that's what led me to kind of talking to this guy about it. And I've seen some other people using it. I've seen people recommend vermiculite because it actually holds, re retains water. But then I was talking to the farmer buddy of mine and he was saying like the problem with that is it can hold so much that you can actually get mold buildup on the surface which doesn't mean you can't use it you just got to be very careful but the perlite it's really light so i did this in the last video but i'll show you again this is how light it is so a seed can pop up through that no problem now it's going to add a little bit of protection to it it's going to add some water retention but not a lot but it's got breathability in it because each one of these little pieces is full of little holes that allow air to get in. And that's why they put it in your soil. So by putting it into, on top of the soil, you're adding a little bit more airflow to it. You're adding some water retention to it. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm not 100% sure in this, so don't take my word for it. You might wanna do your own research, but I think it's an antifungal too. I think, but I'm not sure. So if you look at this soil, look, it's already got perlite in the soil that you get, and most places do. So that's good because it's adding drainage and all that. Now, I get a measuring cup, and I'm just gonna come over here and put it right on top. So you just wanna cover the soil surface with it. And some of the holes may be a little deep, some of them may not, it's okay because that's gonna be so easy for that plant to push up. You shouldn't have any issues. And like I said, when I would water, I would have it so it would get down. And as I watered and like, especially the first watering, I'd push that seed farther down and that just kind of caused an issue. So what I would end up doing is I would end up digging around for the seed a little bit and try and clear it. And I actually had that happen a couple times where I could go in dig up the seed, you know, dig around, find the seed where it's starting to sprout, give it some space, remove some soil, and it would actually come back up. So now that we have all this in, now we water it in, and this is where it's a little bit tricky, but not too bad. So check it out. Water it in, you just want to go gently overlapping side to side. And that's it. And I didn't get them all planted, but we will. We can come out another day and do them. But for right now, we have one six uh one row of the nakamoto rutabaga one row of purple rutabaga and then we actually did five of the spinach because we already have one that started in the greenhouse we did two full tray or one full tray of cabbage and this is the mamba kale so we're going to do that for us this one row and then this one's a dazzling blue and i don't know if i'm going to sell any of these because I haven't had them yet so I don't know how to explain the flavor profile or anything to it but if we can get a harvest off of it sooner than later then we'll do it. Did more cabbage because it's one of the first things we can really get in our garden pretty safely so we want to make sure we get enough and we're going to be like I said this isn't the only thing we're going to do we'll do these for the next like next week we'll come out and do more and more once these pop so we get them inside we're gonna put them on a heat mat and then we're gonna put a humidity dome on them and then when they come up, they'll get light 18 hours a day on, six hours off. The spinach, I may not put outside because it's so warm out here. I may just put it in the shade and I think it'll be perfect so it'll save me some space, which means I could actually come out here and get another um, 
18 seed pack or 18 seeds started and you know put that in that thing so i can have that even tray but the reason why i like to do it like that so it's you know the 10 20 trays are all even is i can fill them up either i either do them in packs of three generally or all six and that's for the labeling purposes because i mean if you look at it tag for all of that one tag for these three so it saves me a lot and i got a bunch of tags a couple of years ago and i'm running low so i just I just took in, a, I cut them in half. And so even though there's something written, I can write over them. So I'll get, you know, I've gotten five years out of those roughly. Um, but it just helps save. So if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen this in action before, I'll take you in the greenhouse and show you how this is and, you know, how it works. And that it actually does work is what I'm trying to say. So just to show that it's been done, this is the rutabaga. Um, it's coming up nicely. It does need to be a little bit, it needs to be fertilized because you can see it's not as green as we'd like. We've got the spinach in the back. We've got some onions here. And then over here we have a 162 tray that's got turnips and yod fi in it. And we're still waiting on the beet. But all this stuff comes up, no problem. I never noticed it before, but now that I've been doing this, it may have been a little bit stressed. I don't know. Because it seems like once the seed opens and it's coming out of this perlite, it's actually more vigor. And I don't know if that's from not having as much resistance on it or if it's a different medium that I'm planting in or not. I'm going to say it's because there's less resistance because it just kind of makes sense because, you know, a seedling is so tender that it just comes right up. So if there's less resistance, then maybe it'll work out better. I don't know, why don't you guys tell me in the comments below? Um, tell me what you think. You think that it's the resistance? You think it's a potting medium? I mean, what do you think about the seedlings coming up stronger? And also, would you try this? You know, it seems crazy, but uh, let us know below. And then we're gonna give this a final watering, and then that's it. Well, I hope to see you guys soon.